Welcome everyone, my name is Zach, and in this video, I'm going to be going over what to expect at the much anticipated Tesla Battery Day coming up on September 22nd. Now this is the first time the company has held a Battery Day, and it's actually been delayed almost an entire year since it was originally planned to be held on September of 2019. And over the past year, there has been a ton of hype for this event, so much so that it has its own countdown website. But it's actually pretty unique for Tesla to be live streaming an event that's not unveiling a new vehicle, unless that's part of it. But we'll talk more about that later. And with this amount of hype, there has to be something fairly significant to talk about. And Elon fueled the hype train back at the 2019 Q4 earnings call when he said, we're gonna talk about this on battery day. And then a lot of these questions will be answered. I think it's gonna be a very compelling story. I think it's actually gonna blow people's minds. It blew my mind and I know it. So it's going to be pretty cool. And to top it off, the stock market is certainly anticipating something exciting considering how the share price has been behaving lately. Although there are numerous factors affecting this right now, but this is definitely having some impact. All right, let's walk through what we know so far and go over some of the leading theories of what we'll learn at the event, including potential surprises and my prediction. All right, so what do we know so far? We know that there's an internal project at Tesla called Project Roadrunner, and we know that this project was started to develop Tesla's own battery cell with higher energy density that could be manufactured more efficiently and therefore at a lower cost. And this is rumored to be a million mile battery, which does not mean that it will last 1 million miles on a charge, but rather that the battery packs themselves would be designed to last a million miles before needing to be replaced. So in summary, it appears that Project Roadrunner was started in order for Tesla to develop its own high efficiency battery cell capable of massive scale production. And we have a couple clues as to how Tesla might achieve this. The first is that Tesla filed a patent for tabless battery cells. And it is said that this cell design lowers production costs by removing steps from the manufacturing process and increases energy capacity of the cell. And Elon himself noted that this is way more important than it sounds. The other clue was when Tesla acquired Maxwell Technologies back in February of 2019. Now Maxwell Technologies specializes in supercapacitors, but the leading theory is that this acquisition was for their dry battery electrode manufacturing process. And this technology can be applied to the manufacturing of battery electrode without the use of solvents to produce a highly reliable electrode material with uniform characteristics resulting in enhanced product performance, long-term durability, and lower manufacturing cost. Now we also know that there's going to be a production tour after the event on the 22nd, and Tesla might already be using this new design and manufacturing processes in a new production line in Fremont. Permits showed an expansion in Fremont likely to be used for Tesla's own battery production line. So there's a good chance that Tesla has already developed and is manufacturing a higher energy density battery cell that is cheaper to produce on a cost per kilowatt hour basis using the dry battery electrode manufacturing process and a tabless cell design. And this higher energy density battery is likely key for some of their upcoming vehicles, such as the Tesla Semi. Energy density is everything when it comes to towing, especially when you're limited to 80,000 pounds of weight for the entire vehicle, including cargo. I think the new Tesla Model S and Roadster with plaid powertrains are perfect candidates for this new battery design as well. The lower battery weight associated with this higher energy density cell is key for performance vehicles such as these. But I don't think it's going to be a priority to get these new cells into the Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, since they're already very efficient and other vehicles need this capability way more. And for this reason, I wouldn't hold your breath that you're going to see a 500 mile range Tesla Model 3 or Model Y anytime soon. And we don't really need that much range in these vehicles. And even if they do use this new cell in the Model 3 and Model Y, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to get more range, since Tesla could just use a smaller battery pack that gives you the same range. And that also doesn't necessarily mean that the price will decrease, since Tesla could just keep that extra money as profit. So I think it's very likely that Tesla will just add additional production lines for this new cell and not necessarily replace any of the ones that they're already using. And I say this because Tesla already does this. The Model 3 and Y use a different battery cell than the X and S. And in addition, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla talked about a plan to get to even higher energy density cells in the future. And maybe even a realistic plan to break the coveted $100 per kilowatt hour threshold at the pack level. This would be a big deal because this is the level where electric vehicles would be able to compete with gas vehicles on cost without subsidies. 
And Elon recently tweeted that 400 watt hours per kilogram with high cycle life produced in volume is only three to four years away. But based on Elon's typical estimates, I'd say five years is much more realistic. For reference, Tesla's current batteries are around 260 watt hours per kilogram. So going up to 400 watt hours per kilogram is nearly a 50% increase in energy density. And it's also been noted that this 400 watt hour per kilogram level is important because that could make the case for electric planes much more realistic. And there's a lot of speculation that silicon nanowire is the key to reaching these energy density levels. And a lot of these theories stem from a teaser image that Tesla posted in preparation for this event. Some people think that this background is a reference to silicon nanowire. And this technology seems very promising in the lab, but it's important to remember that creating a battery cell in the lab is very different than creating one for mass production that is suitable for the environments of a vehicle. These cells need to be capable of stressful charging and discharging rates, high cycle life, and the ability to be produced at a massive scale. All right, so we've talked about a lot of the hints and speculation in regards to battery day, but what are some realistic expectations that would still be very exciting? First off, it would be huge if Tesla had developed a new battery cell that got about 20% higher energy density. And I'm guessing they would achieve this using a tabless cell design and dry battery electrode manufacturing processes. And if they were able to do this all while lowering production cost, that would be huge. Another thing that I think we'll hear about is Tesla's plan to reduce or replace problematic materials in their battery cells, such as cobalt and lithium. And related to that, I think we might hear about plans for battery recycling. In the next few years, I think the need for battery recycling is going to ramp up exponentially. I also wouldn't be surprised if we get a full roadmap for Tesla's vehicles and energy storage systems. And this might include which batteries are being manufactured where and which vehicles they're going to be used in. And even if these things are all we learn about at Battery Day, it's still really good news, and I wouldn't let it detract from the event. We all know that imaginations run wild with things like this, especially in regards to Tesla. And before we jump into my prediction on a surprise reveal at Battery Day, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Okay, so based on previous hints, I think it's very likely that we don't just learn about battery tech, but also what vehicles it will be used in, and potentially even an update on all previously unveiled vehicles that haven't gone into production yet. But my guess is that at this event, they're going to unveil the new Tesla Model S. And this will be the even higher performance version of this car with the Plaid tri-motor powertrain. But I don't think it's just gonna be a performance upgrade. I think it's gonna be a full refresh cosmetically as well. And since this powertrain is used in the new Roadster as well, I wouldn't be surprised if we learn more about that too. Elon has said multiple times on Twitter that they might be able to do an update later this year, and this would be the perfect time. It also wouldn't surprise me if we got an official update on the Tesla Semi, since this is likely the highest priority for this new cell in a market that Tesla wants to enter as soon as possible. But what are your predictions? And did I miss any bits of information? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.